was a man making money steady on the grind with a nine to five distributing weed on the side grown and packaged it was an operation the side hustles and investing just couldn't sustain him had his own brand he called it norwegian but he's always paranoid never know who's scheming always watching his back never know who might attack they want the money and power so he can never relax uh, yeah feelings of paranoia gotta be careful you never know if they're coming for you let's go Today I will discuss cannabis in Norway, but first I want you to note that this is not a true story. This broadcast is meant to entertain you during these most interesting of times. I made all this up because I find Netflix unoriginal and repetitive. I want to make it clear that Norway is not Holland. Americans often confuse all of Europe for the Netherlands. It's like thinking all of the USA behaves like Portland, Oregon. They think that you can buy and smoke weed wherever you want. In fact, some American tourists think that the cops are stoned and every second European has bud on them. The truth is that the laws and perception vary from one country to the next. In Scandinavia, marijuana is a separate issue compared to other liberal viewpoints. For example, a gay Swede who supports refugees and Greta Thunberg will most likely view marijuana as a dangerous narcotic. If you flash him a joint, he will frantically call the police while he shits himself. He will see you as some dangerous narco man or a gangster and feel very threatened. In Sweden, did you know that it's even illegal to have drugs in your system? Technically, they can arrest you for that. Most Norwegians look down on weed, like many mainstream American conservatives. If they smell it, they will snitch you out, so be careful. In Holland, the reality is that cannabis is actually not legal there either. It's decriminalized, meaning the laws are selectively enforced. I worked on a project in Amsterdam for three months. While there, I spent a lot of time learning about this. There are a lot of double standards, gray areas, and paradoxes in the open. Lots of looking the other way by the authorities. For example, coffee shops can sell weed, but they are not allowed to buy it. Moreover, they aren't even allowed to grow it or transport it. So how is it possible that they're always stocked? It's an obvious nuance, a giant elephant in the living room. Also, indoor grows are busted all the time while others operate in plain sight. Oftentimes, the Dutch police, during winter, scan rooftops. They are looking for the ones without snow. That indicates indoor growing, which is heat intensive due to the high pressure sodium lights I linked a documentary all about it below. Nevertheless, we do have an exception in Scandinavia, known as Christiana Park in Copenhagen, Denmark. Like in central Amsterdam, weed is decriminalized in the park. It's okay to buy and consume pot along with other drugs, but you have to stay in the park. I also visited this place while on a business trip. They don't allow photography, but it's pretty easy to sneak stuff out if you don't look like a stoner. The fact is, most Scandinavians believe what the state tells them. They see no need to break the system, since it's been good to them, unlike in other countries. Hypothetically speaking, if the Norwegian government legalized weed, all of the public's views would change overnight, and they would even start encouraging it and having parties. The same people who are ready to throw you in jail would all of a sudden become its biggest proponents. But, until then, it's a dangerous narcotic, and you need to be careful who you talk to. Now, personally, I prefer decriminalization over legalization. Decriminalization will keep the corporate players and Wall Street out of the game, and it will favor the small grower. It will keep the money in the middle class. Legalization will lead to global corporations like Philip Morris and Pfizer dominating the space. We are already seeing this in America with Aurora Cannabis. They will, they will block out the sun by lobbying for regulations and making it cost prohibitive for small entrepreneurs to enter the space. Moreover, they also benefit from the economies of scale and tax breaks and all these other things that only a big company can benefit from. So essentially, if you can't pay up and get the licenses, you will be a criminal. But instead of jail, you'll be fined until you're bankrupt. We already see this with organic food products in America. Only a handful of corporate farms can afford the certificates required to use the organic label. 
and this defeats the purpose altogether of organic food. Now let's get back to the main story. Again, weed is not legal nor tolerated by the mainstream in Norway. And Norway is not in the EU. Therefore, they have their own set of rules. All of the countries within the EU act like one country with respect to their interstate commerce, like ordering from Amazon in America. For example, although Sweden has strict rules regarding weed, it is in the EU. And the irony is that you can order seeds from Holland and they'll be delivered to your door. There is no customs inspection when things go from over one border to the next within the EU. However, in many of the member countries, you are not allowed to grow the seeds or consume pot. <laughs> so you, you, can, you can have them, but you can't grow them. And if you try to take those seeds to Norway and get caught, you'll be charged for the potential production of those seeds, which is like 28 grams per. So in Norway, like Sweden, weed and hash are considered a class one narcotic, just like cocaine or heroin. So if you are caught with 15 grams or more of marijuana or hash, or even just one seed on your person, you can face up to two years of jail time. Another example is CBD. Unlike the rest of the European Union, where seeds and CBD joints are allowed and widely used, it is strictly forbidden in Norway. Norwegian doctors can prescribe medical marijuana, but they very rarely do because of the high, uh, law, all the regulations and potential police scrutiny. They're scared to do it. In Norway, you only find CBD in cosmetics and personal care items in minuscule amounts. But the good news is that punishment in Norway is not hard. Most offenders don't even go to jail. Instead, they do community service. However, if you're a jerk-off offender like Pinkman, my former business partner, they can require you to take a drug test. If you fail it, which he did, they can suspend your driver's license indefinitely, which is what happened to him. Interestingly, Snoop Dogg made headlines in Norway when Customs found 8 grams on his person. Now that's less than the 15 grams that gets you in really big trouble. So after he paid the $2,000 fine, uh, they let him in the country. But he was on Joe Rogan and all these shows making a really big deal about how badly he was treated in Norway. Don't believe it. He was treated quite well. Much better than a local in the same situation. Note that these offenses go on your record in Norway, but most employers here don't do background checks if you look the part. If you look like a stoner, they might dig into your past. People in Norway tend to take things at face value, which can work to your advantage. So now answering the question, where do you find weed in Norway? And the answer is like anywhere else, you need to know someone. It's orders of magnitude easier to find hash than proper green bud on the street. Norwegians want to get stone fast, and they don't like the noxious smell associated with green. However, to me, hash looks like dried dog shit. I stay away from it because it's a refined product with a lot of unknown additives. Moreover, it's smuggled in from North Africa, meaning that there is blood attached to it. Mafias and violence are involved in every step of the value chain, from production in Morocco to distribution in major European cities. Therefore, it doesn't interest me. And like I said, just stay away from it. Now, here is my secret on where to find weed in Norway or anywhere in the world for that matter, if you don't know anybody. Mingle in the smoking area at work. <laughs> there is a side hustle you can do. When traveling for business, buy the duty-free Marlboro Gold cigarettes because you can easily sell them to the smokers for a good profit. And they will save money in this at the same time. So you make a little extra and they save a lot of money. A carton of cigarettes in Norway is 160 euros, but it only costs you 50 euros in the duty free from most European airports like Warsaw or, you know, Brussels or wherever. And you, I generally flip them to the smokers for about 80 euros. So they're saving half and you're making like 50% almost even a little bit more. And that will help you make new friends very quickly. If you're the guy with the smokes, the cheap smokes, Everyone wants to be your friend. And this is perfectly le legal as long as you don't um, bring in one more than one carton. You're allowed one carton or 10 packs of uh, cigarettes each time you enter the country from abroad. And don't push your luck. Um, people do get caught and they get in a lot of trouble. 
and it can blow your cover. So just, just take in one carton at your time and use that to make friends in the smoking area. Now note that smokers are generally more social than the rest of the office crowd or general population for that matter. They are more likely to smoke weed, especially the foreigners uh, that just came to Norway. They're, they're all smoking like crazy trying to adjust to life, you know, trying to figure out the snow and bus schedule and all this other stuff and why people don't talk so much. You know, they're, they're out there in the smoking area and just dying to talk to somebody. Um, also, the smoking area has many people from the kitchen or the cafeteria. You know, a lot of the staff in the kitchen and the cafeteria also are smokers. And they definitely will have useful contacts. Even if you don't smoke, hanging around the smoking area can improve your social skills and your social life. You know, it can also help with your job. Many of the IT guys are chain smokers. And once, you, once um, they know you can hook them up with cheap smokes, they will do favors for you. You won't have to submit a trouble ticket or wait a week. You'll get your problems fixed right away and become a hero in the office. You might even get a top-of-the-line computer while your colleagues struggle with the old crappy ones. Just, just remember that. You know, the, the smoking area at work is like the best-kept secret, and I'm not even sure why I'm sharing that with you. I've kept that close to my chest most of my life. Now let's wrap this up. Norway is not Holland. You need to be careful with, uh, with weed here. Hash and synthetic weed are dog shit. If you need to get stoned, ask around discreetly and in vague terms. The smoking area at work is an excellent resource and a good place to start. Get to know it. <laughs> you know, this is your exercise between this episode and the next. If you enjoyed this episode, give this video a like and subscribe and follow me on Reddit. Check the links below in the comments sec section and see you next time.